Hi there, it's Ian here, and you're watching Grumpy Opinions, the show where I'm going to tell you all about what I think of films, TV shows, games, and life in general. Let's get on with the show. Star Trek Discovery is a sci-fi action prequel show in CBS's Star Trek universe, where Michael Burnham and Captain Pike are single-handedly causing huge amounts of avoidable problems while searching for Spock and the Red Angel. Episode 7, The Sounds of Thunder, opens with the crew still hanging out over Saru's home planet. Michael's got itchy feet though and she decided that she needs to go home to Vulcan on leave because she's got like a funny feeling about her mum knows something and reasons. Now Captain Pike, he's totally okay with this and even though like they're in the middle of the really important like life or death mission so you know off she goes which makes Tyler cross because he thinks he should be informed about everything. Luckily like a space time anomaly, yeah another one but it's not red this time so it's okay. It appears and it does like a time suki thing on the ship so Pike has like the idea to send a probe but you know why, why shoot one off when you can take it there by shuttle? And of course, he's going to pilot it himself because, uh, yeah, reasons. And even Saru's like, wait, why? But then Tyler goes with him. And they end up having like arguments on the ship and then after launching the probe, they get a wee bit close and of course, they end up getting numbed by the time vortex. And while they're inside there, the ship goes a bit weird and Pike sees himself shoot Tyler. And then they argue some more and then finally they agree like to vent plasma to leave a trail. And back on the Discovery, like, they remember that Stamus is sort of immune to time confusion because of the network or DNA or something. I mean, it was all from last season. No, really, I can't really remember exactly why. But anyway, he can figure it out and they can manage to track the ship using it. And he gets Tilly to, like, beam him over, which is kind of brave because I wouldn't give the controls to the TV. Anyway, now the probe's, like, appeared again. But it's come from, like, 500 years in the future and it's evolved and it's gone matrixy with tentacles. And it's trying to, like, munch them both. And that leads right up to the moment that Pike saw in flashback because he's not actually shooting at, you know, Tyler. He's shooting at the, the alien thing. And then Stamets beams over and like, you know, fixes stuff, and then he gets the dudes like the hell out of Dodge, and then the shuttle self-destructs. And after that they warp out the system and like, Pike and Tyler like, have learned to respect each other or something. Meanwhile, Michael's away to Vulcan, and her ma is not really happy to see her, like and her dad's like deep in meditation mode. Anyway, turns out her mum's in the right strop, and Michael realises that she's actually lying to her, and that clearly her mum knows like where Spock is. So it turns out he's in a sacred cave somewhere on Vulcan, chanting himself and scratching symbols and a sequence of numbers on the wall like over and over again. But Amanda doesn't know what they are, and she's apparently tried everything. Anyway, Spock isn't really like with them, and like Sarek suddenly pops up, and he turns out he's like having a conversation like that just beside him meditating. Mean, didn't mean he couldn't hear them. And anyway, they have like a bit of a soap opera conversation about stuff, and that leads to like Michael handing Spock over Section Thirty One, and they're going to interrogate him with a weird brain thing. And of course, that's a really bad idea. And Emperor G like pops in in secret to tell Michael that the brain thing might actually wreck Spock totally, and that's the whole point. And that she wants her to escape because you know that'll help Michael and Spock, but also it'll make you know the captain look bad, which helps her. So they have like a fake wee fight, and like Michael escapes from like the secret CIA spaceship with like almost no difficulty at all, even though she's dragging semi-conscious Spock. And naturally, Captain CIA isn't very happy about this, but Emperor G points out that he's just scared because it turns out he was responsible for Michael's parents' deaths many, many years ago. Really, I didn't think he looked that old. Anyway, in the secretness of an astronaut, Michael realises that the numbers are actually space coordinates and they lead to a place called Talos 4. Ooh. So what did I think? Well, I think this week there was all the usual visual bells and whistles, you know, it looks nice and everything, all the usual standard stuff, you know, from a show that is of this high level of quality and budget. And there's some really nice hints at things, you know, maybe like stuff like the future corrupted probe. I mean, what was that? Now, it could well be that it's a nod to Vija from Star Trek The Motion Picture. V G E R. Vija. Or maybe not, it might just be random, but I really liked that, even if it did come across as a wee bit like reminiscent of The Matrix. There was also a like, mention of Talos 4. Now, Talos 4 is the planet where the aliens live on the cage, like the very first Star Trek episode when Captain Pike first showed up, and the episode where he actually finally goes back to decades later during the original series, it's called The Menagerie. And that's a total fan callback having that in it, and I've seen a couple of like online screenshots of the aliens from the next episode, so I mean that could be really interesting. I was also curious they brought up Stamets being like immune to time, which was a bit confusing because the episode last season made you think it was all just because he was using the mycelial network. Or, I mean, I thought that was why it was. And it seems that like now it's part of his DNA or something. So maybe I missed something or maybe the mycelial network did something to his DNA. But it kind of felt a little bit new, maybe, or maybe that they're retrofitting things. And that leads me into the things I was a bit less happy about this week. Now... As I mentioned last time, there's definitely been a lot of retrofitting and rewriting since they dropped the showrunners. 
But I mean, this week, I really felt like it was coming in hard to like fix issues with possible changes in story direction. I mean, maybe just because they've, they've changed their minds about things. I could be totally wrong on this, but it does feel like things have changed. I mean, what do I mean specifically? Well, look at Michael and Amanda. Now, last time we saw Amanda, she was like sneaking on board the Discovery in secret and wanted secret help from Michael. And she was like, "The only you're the only one I can trust and that sort of thing. Now, suddenly out of nowhere, they're angry with each other. I mean, I genuinely was like, did I miss an episode? Did I blink, you know, with my brain? Did, did something go wrong? I mean, I, I don't understand what happened here. I felt like I'd missed something. Now, it could be I'm going mad, but it felt like it was forced that suddenly we needed, like, Amanda to be really cross with Michael for this scene to work, and then for them to argue and for her to, like, show off Spock. I mean, it was a bit confusing. Not only that, it was kind of weirdly written, because, like, at one point, Amanda mentioned that Sarek's doing, like, some kind of sacred old meditation that's believed to give you answers to things you're seeking, but it's not working. And Michael's like, but he believes in it so strongly. I mean, it should work. Um... That doesn't make sense. That's like saying that if if you know if you believe in the Bible enough, then a prayer should like give you the answers to your maths homework. I mean that doesn't make sense. That's not that's not how things work. I mean that maybe it may be true in a sort of a soul searching kind of you know sort of metaphorical way, but it's not going to make your you know car keys that are lost turn up or your like lumbago go away. I mean it just sounds like bad writing with like you know some some a little bit of terrible writing, and then having them suddenly mention like ha- Spock having space dyslexia. I mean that's fine. You can add that in. I mean it's never been mentioned before ever anywhere in Star Trek but you know but also Amanda apparently is the one who knows all about this and she doesn't put two and two together that maybe the numbers that he's repeating might not be in the right order it's Michael that works that out because Michael can figure out things because Michael reasons and because Michael's always right and not only that but like Amanda specifically said that she had tried figuring out if the numbers meant anything and she tried everything I don't know I've tried looking are they coordinates are they command codes are I they birthdays I don't know I've tried everything I've tried everything everything now I mean, you know, I'm not making up the story in the universe for them, but th- this is the kind of thing that they've got big computers in Star Trek. Surely the computer might have tried putting the numbers in backwards just to check and see if it was something, you know, because if literally all it was was putting them the other way and suddenly they're space coordinates, then putting them the right way should have been space coordinates as well. But it should have just been space coordinates for a different part of space. I mean, that's that's how these things sort of work, right? I mean, anyway, uh, it was all just rather bizarre. I mean, seriously, give me strength type nonsense. And apart from that, I mean, you know, the normal, there was a bit of the crap dialogue that we're a bit used to, some flat, blunt, on the nose kind of stuff. I mean, especially with the whole Tyler and Pike fight, and then massively during that ending bit with Giorgio. And right, honestly, ugh, that whole Giorgio going to escape pal bit was like utterly ridiculous. I mean, this is supposed to be super secret space CIA ship. I mean, even the normal Star Trek ships make it difficult for you to like get a shuttle out, you know, if you're not supposed to. And they're now saying that Michael can do it in absolutely no bother while dragging Spock over her shoulder from the secret CIA ship. I mean, I suppose you could argue that maybe Giorgio had set it up so that she could do that. But, but surely she would have not needed to not be unconscious at the time. I mean, you know, and, and also, how how does Michael have access? And and also, how does Giorgio have access? Because, I mean, sh- surely they know that she's like an evil person from an alternate universe. And I've said this before. It doesn't make any sense. And then cliche of cliches, the bad fat captain's going to be the one who killed Michael's parents, right? I mean, when did he do that? Was he 12 at the time? I mean, you know, the actress who plays Michael is in her 30s. And this actor who plays, you know, the captain, he's he's under 50. So, I mean, he would have to be like his first mission on the job or something like that. And also, he's the space CIA, you know, Section 31 captain. Why hasn't he pushed like Emperor Giorgio down a turbo list or got her put in prison or anything? But he's just letting her do really, really obvious, like literally like kids TV level stuff of trying to mess him about and like, you know, screw him over. I mean, honestly, I mean, obviously, I know they've talked about there's going to be a spin-off show or, the, you know, there was going to be, maybe there won't be now, but who knows, but she's going to be the lead in it. So, obviously, she's going to have to take over the ship at some point, but it's just coming across as cheesy and bad. So, seriously, enough now. But anyway... Sorry again for the bit of delay on this. Um, I'm, I'm really trying to catch up as best I can. I've got like you know everything written out for the next episode as well. So I'm going to record them all today and I'm going to edit them up over the next couple of days and watch the new episode. So yeah, thanks for you know sticking with me as I get back on schedule. And um, So till next time, I've been Ian and these have been my grumpy opinions.